Hey guys, welcome back to the Johnny Z Gaming, and uh, yeah, we're going to continue on with our Cold Waters 1984 campaign, and uh, see what sort of trouble we can get up to in this one. So, Intel reports wolf pack of enemy subs, uh, two to four fox trots. Um, so, yeah, we'll just get reloaded here, ready to take these guys on. It looks like they're, they're going to be heading towards the, the North Atlantic um, and for the gap. So we're going to we're going to hover around the um, Norwegian Sea area. So just be between two and four submarines coming in this pack. So we're just going to hover around until uh, they get detected. And it looks like we've got one coming down now. So this this could be our guy. Or guys, right here. Um, so we'll head over towards his location, come to a stop, and let him come towards the final, final little distance. I just want to make sure I catch him. There we go, and we're in. Okay, so depth 50 feet. Um, we've got a contact bearing 110 Sierra One, close to 10,000 yards, and we'll go and uh, sniff these guys out and engage them. So we've already got a contact Sierra 1, so we'll just have a look, so we've got a weak layer and we'll just get this guy classified. And it is a Foxtrot indeed, which is what we're looking for. Con sonar, Sierra one. So, we we'll just summary. need to get our solution. Uh, a little bit better now than 41% at the minute. Sonar's giving him uh, a range of 22,000 yards away from our current location, so I'm just going to change course, try and get a better fix. He's just dropped below the layer, but obviously it's weak, so we're still picking him up. I've got a total water depth of 712 feet, so it's not particularly deep. Uh, most of these uh, in the open ocean will be over a thousand feet which gives a little bit more room to manoeuvre but uh, this is not uh, that shallow and can, uh, considering some of the levels that we've got coming up later on in the campaigns Passing 100 feet. so we're just going to drop a depth and try and uh, just drop under the layer match his depth and uh, try and get a better fix on his uh, his location. The solution is coming up, so we're at 62% now. And uh, yeah, it looks like he's moving south, south almost, or southwest slightly. Um, he's obviously not alerted to our presence. He's only doing eight knots, and we're not we haven't got any torpedoes heading our way that we know of. So at the minute he's unaware of our location. We are going into his baffles at the minute. So I'll just let his solution just come up a little bit. The ambient noise is low, 75 decibels, so he is going to hear the torpedo launch. And no doubt try and evade once we do get um, a pretty good solution on him. So we're working our way up now, so we've got his course, um, he's heading at 213, so just past south, um, south by southwest, so he's at 20,000 yards, we're at 82% now, so we are getting a good fix on this guy. I think it's also helped us drop in to a similar depth as well. So. Eighty-eight percent now. There he is. He's popped up. Ninety-five percent. So now we've got a perfect firing solution on him, and uh, yeah, we can uh, we can look to get to get a shot on this guy now. He's obviously still unaware of us. So I'm just going to lead him slightly. He's obviously not changed his course, and. Uh, send that torpedo away in this direction 
so he's instantly started cavitating so he realises he's under attack and obviously at the moment we don't know if there's any more submarines out here so they're also going to no doubt have heard that and know that he's cavitating so he looks to be turning more towards the southeast now so yeah his course is changing he's, he's heading away from the torpedo so I may need to take control of this uh, torpedo which I have done and we'll just steer it slightly towards the direction which is traveling obviously we've kept the wire so we can control the torpedo and yeah his speed's picking up now so he's obviously going to be trying to evade this torpedo so the weapon's got a lock on him now still no more contacts have popped up and there you go, you can see us just in the distance their weapon soon caught up with him see how he deals with it okay so he's popped a noise maker which is a given I will just let the uh, weapon go into uh, homing and try and reacquire him which he does he's turning into the weapon so I'd say he's going to eat this torpedo, obviously he's dropped off sonar and there we go, bang we've got him and we've straight away got another contact bearing 124 Sierra 2 so he's, uh, he's obviously got at least one friend out here so let's see if we can find this guy well sonar's got him a fair distance away, 64,000 yards obviously we've only got 35% solution on that so that's going to alter us down to 41 already so I'm going to uh, go straight towards the wreck of that fox shot that's just going to give us a little bit of cover the noise that's coming off the wreck and make it a bit more difficult for his friend there to uh, figure out where I am until it's too late so we're just going to head over towards the wreck and see whether we can't uh, ambush this guy once we come uh, we get over the top of it as always guys I um, hope you're enjoying the videos um, obviously like and subscribe to the video uh, to the channel and uh, obviously any help pointers anything like that you guys want to give me uh, things you want to see more of, less of, etc. Um, let me know in the comments. Um, I'll do my best to uh, to uh, do that. So I'm just going to dive down towards the bottom and um, we've sped up now to 20 knots. Just close the distance and uh, try and get the job done. Yeah, so we've lost contact now, that's no good. We've obviously got the wreck in front of us. He'll be suffering from the same sort of thing, but we know the direction he's we know he's heading towards towards us.
So fingers crossed. The uh, the initial contact we had with Sarah, Sierra Two, uh, the range that they gave us, does put him there, and he's not right next to you where where his friend's just been uh, blown out of the water. I'll say we, he may surprise us before we get the chance to surprise him. But I'm fairly certain he's going to be a decent distance away. Um, but once we get towards the wreck, we'll, uh, we'll drop our speed and try and reacquire him. Probably could have gone a little bit quicker than this, but I didn't want to make too much noise, even this side of the wreck, that might encourage him to uh, send a torpedo our way, even though the wreck, no doubt, will, uh, will probably suck up that torpedo due to the noise that it's making. So I'm almost using it as a bit of a shield, really, um, against the torpedo, and obviously his sonar picking us up. But we can, uh, we can, but hope he's heading back to find out what's happened to his friend. But the minute we're not picking up any other contacts, obviously we, we're doing 20 knots. So at the minute we're probably not going to pick anything up until we slow down a little bit. So I just took the speed up a little bit more. So we're, we're going back up to 33 knots. Now I'll try and get up to this wreck a bit, a bit, a bit quicker. It's a game that you do have to be a little bit patient with, um, and especially the later on missions. You can't just go racing about at full speed. You're just going to get blown out of the water almost immediately. And once we've got enemy aircraft to to deal with later on in the campaign, um, they can be a real nuisance as it just will not leave you alone but at the minute we've not encountered any so we've got that to be thankful for so we're deep enough for us to go uh, 30, 30 plus knots without cavitating So we're about coming up to the point where we're going to find out whether he's, uh, he's carried on towards us or whether he's moving away and we'll try and reacquire him and see if we can't get this uh, this mission done. Ok so we're dropping our speed, we're frigging for ultra quiet, which obviously is going to stop the torpedo loading but we've got three other tubes to choose from at the minute so I'm not that concerned. Uh, speed's coming down there. Once we drop sort of below 10 knots, we should hopefully reacquire this guy. And then we can have a look to see whereabouts he is. Make, make turns four, five, so let that tube reload. And we're coming, back, coming down now on our speed. And there we go, he's popped back up again. I'd say he's probably a little bit closer than he was. Con maneuvering, making turns for five knots. So I was going at twenty seven thousand twenty seven thousand yards. He looks to be moving south or southwest. Still only a thirty seven percent solution though, so we'll take a we'll make a slight course change and try and see if we can't improve on this solution. So I'm just coming 
We're about around to due south almost now. So we're sort of heading in his direction. Also, we've got his depth here around the 300 feet, three to 400 feet depth. So our solution is coming up now as well, which is nice. And there we go. We've got his course. So he's heading 205. So just past south. Uh, to southwest. So he's obviously decided he's not going to investigate his friend's uh, sinking, and uh, he's he's had enough. He's obviously had enough of this, so he's going to uh, head off and go home. But uh, we're not going to uh, let him sneak away that easily. Obviously, the important thing is if we can keep the wire. Um, if we do send a torpedo his way, and obviously there we go, his his uh, his range has just jumped right back to eleven thousand yards. So yeah, we could have fired a torpedo torpedo, and uh, if we'd have lost the wire, it wouldn't have gone active until ten thousand yards after him. So. <coughs> He's popped up on the uh, screen now as well. We've got a 95% solution on him. So he knows exactly where he is now. So we'll get a weapon away and see if we can't get this guy sunk. He looks to be. He looks to be turning slightly away. His course has changed only slightly though. He's not cavitating either, so at the minute I can only presume he's not been alerted to all, all the torpedo in the water, but I find that hard to believe given the ambient noise. So the torpedo's gone active. We are in passive homing on the torpedo, so it is isn't going to be pinging, which would alert him as well. And he looks like he's going to head straight into where the weapon uh, homing nose cone is going to is going to end up once it reaches anywhere near him. His course is still about the same. So he must have been unaware of our presence, or the torpedo heading towards him at this point. Because as you can see he's not cavitating, now oh, he's, oh, he's turning, so he, yeah, so it's acquired him, he's realised and he's turning away. And just see us off in the distance there, so the weapon's got a lock on him now. So I'm going to, well, I look to consider going to active, but there's really no need. Passive saying, oh, we'll get the job done with this noise level. Active's more for when you've got to high ambient noise. Well, he's not cavitating. His speed's not changed, so he's dropped a noisemaker. Oh, he's dropped a noisemaker, so uh, and he's trying to turn, but he's gone the complete wrong way because this weapon's going to come back around. So 
He's going to try and turn out of it. He's got him again. And uh, yeah, it's just a matter of time, I think. He's not going to avoid this sort of beat, though. Yeah. And we've got him. Dropped a noisemaker right at the last second, but it was way too late for that. So he's down. No other contacts or vessels nearby, so we'll leave. Yeah, there we go. We've got both of them. And yeah, Admiral's happy. Um, that's what he wanted. Those two ships sinking, so they're done. Oh, and some more bling. Navy Commendation Medal for Meritorious Service while serving as Commander Officer. Don't lose these numerous accomplishments. Inspired leadership and steadfast devotion to duty. And uh, we're helping the convoys as well, taking out them submarines. They haven't got anything to worry about now. <coughs> So that's the end of the video for today, hope you enjoyed that one and as always like, subscribe to the video if you did and comment and I'll uh, catch you in the next one.